News stories about health benefits and risks often include statistics and numbers because those stories normally originate from studies conducted by researchers. A case in point, the World Health Organization announced in October 2015 that there was enough evidence to designate processed meats such as bacon, ham and sausages as carcinogens. The international organization categorized eating processed meats in the same rank as smoking cigarettes. And a WHO scientist said eating 50 grams of processed meat daily increases the chance of developing colorectal cancer by 18%. It made news all over the world. When my colleague and I analysed the news coverage, however, we realised that many news reports did not tell us the baseline of the increase. The risk was not 18%, but it goes up by 18% from the baseline. We need to know what the base risk is to understand its significance. Not so surprisingly, many news outlets resorted to he said, she said journalism. WHO says this, other experts disagree. Therefore, things are not clear. It may be factual, but such reports do not help or inform the news audience. An article from the Huffington Post, on the other hand, mentioned that an average lifetime risk of developing colorectal cancer in the United States is 4.5%, according to the country's National Cancer Institute. Now, if we take this as the base risk and suppose that eating 50 grams of processed meat, an equivalent of three slices of cooked bacon every day, could increase the risk from there by 18%, it means the risk goes up from 4.5% to 5.3%. The increased risk is about one percentage point. The article also told us that the likelihood of developing lung cancer for non-smokers is 7%. And for those who smoke a pack of cigarettes every day, the risk is 23 times higher than that. In other words, the article put the numbers into context and explained that eating processed meats does not pose the same health risks as cigarette smoking does. But the great explanatory journalism was rare, unfortunately. It was disheartening to see that many journalists sensationally equated the processed meats with cigarettes and emphasised the increased risk without doing basic math and research. Another cautionary tale is a news story that treats correlation as causality. If a scientific study discovered that there is a statistically significant positive correlation between, say, the number of hours a person spends on the internet and one's IQ levels, it does not mean there is a cause and effect relationship. Yes, the crunch numbers may show that people who spend longer hours on the internet have higher IQ levels, but it does not indicate that spending more time on the internet makes people smarter. But once such a study is published, chances are that a journalist somewhere will wrongly report the results with the cause and effect relationship. And as you can imagine, such stories have a tendency to go viral quickly on the internet. Two variables that correlate may not have any relationship at all. This website called Spurious Correlations demonstrates this in a humorous manner. The chart on the screen shows the number of people who drowned by falling into a swimming pool in the United States between 1999 and 2009, which apparently correlates with the number of films that the actor Nicolas Cage appeared in. This chart shows that the divorce rate in the state of Maine correlates with per capita consumption of margarine. Do you think there is any cause and effect relationship in this statistical data? Basic understanding in mathematics and statistics greatly enhances our news literacy skills. It fosters a critical eye and discerning attitude. In the recommended reading section, we have listed many useful resources that you can go through to learn more about medical research and how to understand the findings as ordinary news consumers.